episode of the Riff Rundown with my friends at Fishman. We're going to be learning Seagull by Bad Company today. One of my favorite tunes. Great for beginners, too. We've got a lot of good open chords, stuff like that. Again, a really, really fun song. So let's go ahead and get started again. Before we do that, we're going to want to get our acoustic guitar in drop D tuning. So what does this mean? All you're going to do is bring this low E string down to D. That's all you're going to do. Yes, I am back, folks. I am live today. Looks like we had some technical difficulties. I think someone like hit an electrical pole or something. So I think the, the electricity is now back. So we are great. All right. So drop D tuning on this one. Again, a really fun song here. And again, if you're enjoying these lessons, please be sure to subscribe to the channel. It absolutely helps the cause. So get that guitar in drop D tuning. And again, I want to know question of the day where you're tuning in from and the first song you ever learned how to play on guitar. I want to know it. All right. So here we go. This is Seagull by Bad Company. So, fingers crossed, make sure we have some good electricity through the rest of this lesson. So let's go ahead and do it. So let's look at the top. So the intro, what's great about this is that we have like D, C, and G, but right, we're, we're, we're doing this in a really beautiful way. The way that, that Paul Rogers wrote this tune, I think it's just so, so beautiful. So what we're going to do here is I'm going to play the intro just a little bit slower. Now keep in mind with this intro we're also covering a lot of the verse okay so again drop you tuning on this one today and then question of the day let me know the first song you learned to play on guitar so what we're gonna do here is this i'm gonna play this a little bit slower so here we go That's what's happening there. As we can see, we're getting this little like descending bass line that we are doing with our third and fourth finger on the C and the B note, respectively. All right, so what we're gonna do here is we're gonna go ahead and play that D chord, okay? For those of you who don't know how to play it, okay? First three fingers here. First finger, place that on the second fret of the G string, okay? That's our A note. You're gonna get your second finger here, placing that on the F sharp, second fret, the high E string. And then our third finger here, go ahead and place that on the third fret, the B string. That is our D note. So again, one, three, five of that D chord, D, F sharp, and A. We've got them all here, okay? So what we're gonna do, the first thing is we are going to do this hammer on here, like that. And how we're gonna do that is we're gonna play the open G string, and then we're gonna hammer on with that first finger on that A note, second fret of that G string. So let's just go ahead and do that first. Now for my beginners here, the tricky part might be to keep the second and third finger down, but I want you to do your best, okay? So just like that. Okay, pretty straightforward. So from there, what we're gonna do here is we're gonna play the open D string. 
with our pick or plectrum, wherever you are from, right? We're gonna strike downwards on both of those strings, the G and the D string. Just like that, all right? Now from here, what is comfortable for me when I'm playing this is doing two up strokes. Like that. So starting from the high E string, very light here. Again, let the pick do the work for you. We don't want that upstroke to be too aggressive. I don't want you to feel like you're fighting gravity here because because you're not. We want this to be very light and very loose and very airy. Okay. So let's go ahead and put all of those three parts together nice and slowly here for that D major chord. <laughs> So that's what it is nice and slowly here. So we really want to get the hang of that because that is the big opening part, right? So we want that to become very loose and very fluid, okay? Okay, it's a really, really beautiful way to play this D chord. Okay, so what we're gonna do next after this part Okay, we're gonna do that twice. And then we go to this. Okay, and all we're gonna do here. Okay, so there's gonna be a lot of pivot fingers here and a lot of fingers kind of moving around. But the main and the constant motif are gonna be these two notes here, that F sharp and that D note. These two notes are gonna carry through with the rest of the chords that we're playing here today, okay? So what we've got here, So that's the next bit here. What we're going to do, open A string with that second finger. Okay, we're going to reach over here, second finger, third fret of that A string and hammer onto that C note, third fret of the A string. Okay? Okay, so just like that. And then here, we're gonna lightly brush, downward stroke, okay, on the A string, D string, G string. Just like that, okay? So it's gonna sound like this. See what I mean? We brush, just like that. And what we're gonna do here, first finger goes down, again, that motif of that F sharp, and that D note there is gonna ring through, and that's gonna be two upstrokes like we did the first time, okay? So if I play this nice and slowly, it's gonna sound like this. So let's do that a few times together. Let me know how everybody's doing in the comments. Again, we are live today, and if you're enjoying these lessons, please be sure to subscribe to the channel. It absolutely, absolutely helps the cause, all right? So here we go, nice and slowly. Just that D, and I'm calling this a C major seven over C. That's what I'm calling that chord today. All right, so here we go. Again. Let's do that again. for good luck, why not? Now from here, we are going to descend. All right, now we're gonna play like a G major seven over B. We're gonna get that second finger. Okay, we're moving it out of the way. We're gonna bring it back to that F sharp, second fret of the E string. So I'll do that again. Third finger that's on that C note on the A string. Bring it on back. Okay, to the F sharp on that E string, just like that. Okay, you can do it. For my beginners who are watching, you can do this. First finger is now going to go on the second fret of the A string. That is our B note. And we're gonna do the same thing here as we're gonna play that open A string and then hammer on in that B note. 
hook just like that. And again, same deal here. Again, a nice brush, okay, of that A string, D string, and G string. And then a nice upstroke, okay, on that F sharp and, and, and D there down here, that part of the chord, okay? So that will sound like this in context. I'm gonna go ahead and play the chord before it, and it will sound like this. So that's the move. Okay, let's do that again. And again. And one more time. Okay, so that's what's happening there. Now, if we go ahead and play this slowly, let's go ahead and do it in context with all three of those chords. All right, so here we go from the top. Okay, so that's it nice and slow. So if I go ahead and play this, just a touch faster, okay? So we're getting the hang of this. Let me know how everybody's doing in the comments, all right? So we're getting the hang of this, right? We're allowing this, this strumming to get a little more fluid here. And like I say, we can't play anything fast, we can't play slow. One of my favorite sayings to say here on the Riff Rundown. So really, really take your time with this, okay? You will get the hang of it. It may sound a little staticky and a little, you know, a little too segmented at the beginning, but the more you get through it, the more these parts will gel together. So I encourage you to keep practicing, all right? Good, good focused, good practice with intention is always the best kind of practice, all right? So here we go again from the very, very top. And again, we're covering a lot of ground because this is our ver these are our verses too, all right? So here we go again. <laughs> Keep doing this. Okay, so that's it a little slower. Now here it is a little faster, right, with that finesse that we've built from practicing, right? So here you go, so here it is from the top. to go between those three chords, I think. It's great, it's great. So again, question of the day, folks, is first song you learned how to play on guitar. And again, I wanna thank my friends at Fishman for uh, helping me do these lessons week after week. And if you wanna find out more about all the gear I use, including the R Spectrum DI and the, um, the Matrix Infinity VT Enhanced Pickup that I have on this, uh, in my Martin 00017E, you can check the link below in the video description and I'm gonna do this too. Let's see if it's gonna let me. All right, well, you can check out my EP, The Voices. It's on Bandcamp and on my website and all that good stuff, angelspatrullimusic.com. You can check it out there and uh, yeah, would appreciate it. Would appreciate if you gave the tunes a listen. We had a lot of fun making that, making that EP, it was great. <laughs> All right, so what we're gonna do here is now we're gonna get onto the verse. So that is our intro. Again, those three chords back and forth. Okay, again, really beautiful, really, really beautiful series of chords. So the verse sounds like this. I'm gonna play through it slowly and I'll tell you the order in which we're gonna do these chords and we're gonna play it together, all right? So here is the verse. So verse.
a good thing for me in counting, it's like, okay, how many times do I play that D chord? Um, when we do that hammer on, have that be like your one, right? One, two, three, four. See what I mean? So that's, a good, that's how I like to count it when I'm doing this. So when we look at the verse, okay, we're gonna play the D, that, that C, so that C major seven over C and that C major seven over B. We're, all, we're gonna play all of those one time. So that will sound like this. Okay, then after that, okay, this is the first part of the verse, we're gonna play that D section twice. So that's the first line of the verse. So with the context of the other verses, um, Seagull, you fly across the horizons. Okay, so like that, just to kind of give you context. Um, so then the next part where it goes into the misty morning sun, so that into the misty morning sun. Notice how I played the D at the end four times, okay? So again, in context, the first two lines of verse one, okay? So, Seagull, you fly across the horizon into See how we did those D chords at the end? First part was two times, and then that second part of the verse was four times, all right? So after that, the third part of the verse, D, and then that, right, that progression, we're gonna keep doing that, and then we tag on, again, the two D chords at the end. From there, we're gonna go straight to that C major seven over C. So the shape of things to come, then we go to the D chord four times. Two, three, four. So that's the whole breakdown of verse one. Because after this first verse, we have a verse two before we get to the chorus. So I'm going to go ahead and play verse one nice and slowly here. Follow along. Let me know how everybody's doing. All right. So this is just verse one. So here we go. Nice and slow. I'll slow it down a little bit for you guys. All right. So here we go. So that's verse one, all right? So this is happening there. Not too bad. So again, keep me posted how everybody's doing in the comments today. Again, if you're enjoying these lessons, please be sure to subscribe to the channel. It absolutely helps the cause. Click that like button too, share a video with a friend. Um, it helps out a lot. And again, you wanna check out all the cool Fishman gear. Link is in the video description below. All right, so yeah, those thumbs up. I guess it helps the algorithm be great. So, so thank you all so much for that. All right, so that's what's happening there. So notice how the intro and the verses, it's pretty much the same chords. We're covering a ton of ground today. So now we get into verse two. Verse two is almost identical to verse one. The only difference is the D chord at the very, very end of the verse. Instead of going four times through, it only goes two times through. And then we get into 
B chorus, all right? So verse two would sound like this, all right? So here we go. straight into the chorus. The chorus is probably my favorite part of the song. It's really, really beautiful. The chord shapes themselves um, are, are really, really great. So that's what's happening there. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to play through the intro, verse one and verse two, okay, just to get ourselves, again, I'm all about context and, and, and getting us, I want you guys to play this song. I want you to be successful when you're, when you're learning this and when you're watching this video and re-watching this video. I want you to be successful. That's why I do these riff rundowns. All right, so what I'm going to do here, I will call out the parts. So I'll say like verse one, verse two. Okay, so I'll call them out. So everybody, here we go. Okay, intro. Verse one, verse two, okay? So that's what's happening there. So now the chorus, and the chorus, if we are listening, um, if we're listening to this tune, the chorus comes in at the one minute 19 second mark, roughly. So I'm starting from there. So again, if, you, if you're taking notes, okay, one minute 19 seconds is when this first chorus comes in. And the first chorus is gonna sound like this. I'll play it just a touch slower than I did um, at the top of the lesson, okay? So it sounds like this. there in the chorus. So if we go ahead and look and see what chords are we playing. So we're playing in a D chord. We're playing an A chord. A C. A G. And then back to D. Okay. Now lucky for us here, since we are in drop D tuning, we can play a D chord and play all six strings. So I'll put in a little theory. So why is that? If we go back and we think, okay, well, what are the three notes that are in uh, D major again? So we have D, F sharp, and A. So notice when we are strumming this low E string, which has now been tuned to D, so that's a D note, it's a root. Yes, right? Then we have an open A string, right? That's our five. We have another D string here, which is D, another root. We have another A here that we're playing with our first finger on the second fret of the G string. We have another D here, third fret of the B string. And then we have an F sharp, which is a three on the second fret of the, he the E here. So notice how all of those notes that build up that chord, they're all here. We play all six strings. Really beautiful way to play a D major chord. Okay, by including all those 
those strengths. Pretty neat, all right? So feel free, when you're getting into this course, I really want you to dig into it, not too aggressively, but I want you to dig in again. It's like a beautiful lift in the song. So play with a little more, right, a little more force, but, but in a delicate way, all right? Just to lift that song a bit. So, and I encourage you to listen to the original too, and you can see what I mean. Um, again, really great album too, solid songs on there. Oh, one of my favorite rock albums ever. So. What we're gonna do here is when we play this first D chord, pretty basic strumming pattern here, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. Okay, and if I do that slower, it'll sound like this. I'll do that again. I'm strumming all six strings again. Now when we switch to an A chord, we're gonna play it this way. In listening back to the, the tune that's on the record, I was really hearing those high E's next to each other. So here's how we play this version of A. So I'm gonna use these first three fingers here. Okay, first finger, I want you to place that on the fifth fret of the B string. So that's our E note. We're going to get our second finger here, sixth fret of the G string. Okay, that's going to be our C sharp. It's our third. And then our third finger is going to go here, which is our A note, seventh fret of the A string. So here's what I want you to do when you're strumming this. Okay. Keep in mind this low E string has been tuned down to D. If I were to play this with A, kind of cool, but not what we want here. Okay. So what I would like you to do instead, okay, see how my thumb is here? I'm not pressing at all. I'm just using it to go on top of the string, not pressing. See how I'm buffering the note? I'm muting it, so I'm not pressing, okay? I'm just letting it chill, letting it rest, okay? So that means that I can strum the rest of the strings, including that string, but I won't hear this one because it is being buffered, all right? so. Kind of a cool little trick I do quite a bit when I'm playing and there's certain, you know, strings I don't want to ring out. I tend to, to kind of mute them, all right? So we want all of the strings to ring, especially that B and E string. We really want them together, okay? And it's gonna be the same strumming pattern here. Down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. Just like that, all right? So let's go ahead and go between D and A. I'm gonna go slowly here, follow along, here we go. Just like that, let's do it again. Let's do it a little faster. Now, we're gonna utilize this shape because the next two chords is gonna be a C and a G. So, the shape, okay? So we're playing A right now, but I want us to move it up to C. So, we know that C is a step and a half up from A, which, in terms for us guitar players, is gonna be three frets, okay? So what I want you to do here, we're counting from this first finger. Okay, first finger's on the fifth fret. I want us to move everything up three frets. So your first finger should be on the eighth fret of the B string, your second finger on the ninth fret of the G string, and your third finger on the 10th fret of the D string. We're gonna do the same little trick here with the thumb, okay? And we're gonna go ahead and strum that, okay? Strum all six strings with our little buffered E string. Okay, just like that, okay, pretty cool stuff. So what we're gonna do here is just a down, up, down on the C chord and then we're gonna bring it to G, okay? So we're gonna bring this shape all the way back. First finger should be on the third fret of the B string, second finger, fourth fret of the G string, and then our third finger, fifth fret of the D string, okay? And listen to this chord. Okay, 
So from there, same thing. Down, up, down. So in context, it sounds like this, just C and G. Okay, so let's put that together. So we have D, A, C, and G together. So here we go, nice and slowly. to that D chord at the end, all right? So here we go. Let's bring it just a touch faster. Okay, here we go. And here we go again. Fly through the sky. Commentary. Let's bring up the speed a little bit. And let's do it a couple more times here. Super fun. So when we get to the second half of this chorus, okay, it's still the same chords, D, A, C, and G, right? But what we're gonna do here is we're gonna give C its own measure and G its own measure. Instead of having them split one, they're gonna have their own. So that's gonna sound like this. like that and then we get into the, 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 the intro phrase. All right, so again, a lot of familiar things that we're bringing back into this chorus as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and play through the entire chorus. I'll do a pass that's a little bit slower and then we'll do a pass that's a little faster. And again, if you're enjoying these lessons, click that like button, subscribe to the channel, it helps the cause. And uh, here we go, here's the chorus. Second half of the chorus, here we go. And one more time. And then from there we go into a verse three. So let's go ahead and do that chorus again, just a touch faster. Here we go. Song. Such a pretty song. So let's go ahead and do this. So we're gonna play it from the top. Again, I'm all about giving you guys context when you're playing this stuff. I want you to be successful when you're playing. So what I'm gonna do, we're gonna do this. Intro, verse one, verse two, chorus. Okay? And by doing this, we're gonna cover a lot of ground on the song. And then all we have left 
really is the the the, the final like outro and it's it's a blast it's, a, it's super fun to play as well so so let's go ahead start it from the top intro i will call out the parts so you can play along all right so here's the intro <laughs> a touch slower. Intro three times. We go into a verse three. So verse three is exactly the same as verse two, okay? We're at the tail end, that final D chord, we are only repeating two times, all right? So that's what's happening in verse three. So pretty, pretty great stuff, okay? Again, a really beautiful song. So something too, I wanna just backtrack just a moment here. For my beginners, right, in that chorus section, if these shapes, for the A chord, C chord, and G chord, if they are a little too difficult for you, because again, I like to give options um, for all playing levels, if that's too difficult, could you play these up here? Absolutely. Is it gonna sound a little bit different? Yes, because the notes are just, you know, they're, they're, they're in different spots, so some, you know, it's, it's gonna sound a little bit different, but they are still the correct chords. So for my beginners, okay, if we wanted to do that chorus, okay, with easier chords, it would sound like this. And again, the strumming pattern, we're gonna keep it exactly the same, okay? We're just gonna change the chords, so, or at least where the chords are, okay? So it would sound like this. So this is beginner level for that chorus. You don't know how to play the A, C, or that G over B chord, I'm gonna show you how to play it. So the A chord, I like to play an A chord with my second, third, and fourth finger. Okay, there are many different ways to play it. This is just the way that I like to do it, all right? So second finger, second fret of the D string, that's E. You're gonna get your third finger, second fret of the G string, which is A, and then you're gonna get your fourth finger here, placing that on the C sharp, which is on the second fret 
of the B string. So you can go ahead and do that. And you would strum from the A string downward. The only thing here, again, this is not how it's played on the record. Because the record, right, we have those higher parts. But as, if this is where you are in your level of playing, it's going to sound wonderful. So go ahead and do that and then work up to playing it here. Okay, so that's A. And then we have our C here. Again, first finger, first fret of the B string, that's C. Second finger, second fret of the D string, that's E. Third finger, third fret of the A string, that is C. Okay. So you play it like that from the A string downward. Um, and then we would do a G over B in this case because if we do this, that's an F note. We don't want that. Okay. So all you're going to do is you're going to get your first finger here, first fret of the A string, which is B and then your third finger on the third fret of the B string, which is D, and then your pinky finger on G, which is on the third fret of the high E string. Now what you're gonna do here, just strum from the A string downward on this chord as well. So just like that. All right, so that's what's happening there. So again, I will go through both parts of that chorus yet again. So here is the way it is on the record. So, we're gonna do here. Now here is the beginner version. Okay, so hurry. Okay, we're keeping it pretty central with those chords. section. So I know we've been playing a lot. Let's go ahead and give our hands a rest. This is a live Q&A. So if you guys have questions, um, let's put a couple in the comment section. I will get to as many of those as we can. Again, this, uh, th these are so much fun. I, I love doing these riff rundowns. They're such a blast. And again, it's really great to, uh, to do this one live today. I've been pretty busy gigging and stuff. Uh, if you want to check out my band, Angela Petrilli, and the players, you can go to my website, AngelaPetrilliMusic.com, and find out when we'll be playing in a town near you. Uh, you can check out our new EP called The Voices that came out back in May of 2023. So you can go and, 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 and give, that, give that a listen. It was, uh, it was a ton of fun to make. It was a really, really fun EP to make, so we're really proud of it. So you can check it out there. Again, live Q&A. So if you guys have questions, put them in the comment section. I will get to some of those. And again, if you're late to the party, all good. Question of the day is what was the first song that you learned how to play on guitar? I want to know. So put that in the comments. Put that in the comments too. Uh, great, great stuff indeed. Oh, we got people asking about Stevie Ray Vaughan lessons. Yes, I did a lesson um, on life by the drop, which is super, super fun too. Brian's asking, play in Boston. Hey, one of these days. I was, <laughs> I was just there a couple weeks ago, but hope to, uh, hope to be back very, very soon. I love going to Boston. Good people, good food, good times. Boston's great. Boston's great. So, uh, yeah, I would love to do that. Um, yeah, we got some sore hands. I know we're gonna. That's why I put the Q and A here, the Q and A section of the hour, just so we can give our hands a little bit of a break. I know, especially with this part here with that intro, notice how we are never moving that third finger, right? We're not moving it at all. It's really, think of it as like a kickstand or like a pivot finger, right? As we're going through and playing those chords, it's really great. So no need to lift that finger up 
because why expel the energy when we're gonna put it right back where it was? So really encourage you when you're doing that section, notice how my third finger, not moving at all, okay? So keep that in mind when you're learning it too, all right? Really take your time with it. Um, what is the purpose of drop D? Really didn't use it a ton. It's really interesting. I, I, I thought the same thing, and when I was watching a lot of live uh, versions of this, I noticed it was really impactful in that chorus, and we really do see that when that D chord comes in. It's, it's funny, with some songs that utilize drop D, sometimes it's just all over the place with something like, a, you know, Can't Find My Way Home, particularly um, Bonnie Raitt's version of it, which you have, if you haven't heard yet, is absolutely fantastic. Um, you can really hear it utilized there, but something like this, to me at least, this is just from my, you know, in, in learning the song and listening to it, it seems like it was just a really uplifting note, that low droning D, to include in that lifting chorus. That would be, you know, I, I didn't write the tune, obviously, but, but I could think that perhaps that's why, because we wanted, you know, Paul wanted all of those strings included, so why not drop um, the, the, the low E? So, um, so yeah, it's, it's, it's interesting. That's interesting indeed. So thank you for that question, Chuck. Love it, love it. All right, so again, live Q&A, so put those questions in the comments. Let's go ahead and get started here on that last bit. So I'll call this whole thing like the outro, okay? So again, that figure of the intro, right? This part, we're gonna see it a ton. It is repeated a ton towards the end of the song. I believe it was repeated 12 times, um, but again, give it a, give it a listen. Um, on your own time when you're when you're learning this tune but yeah this just that that motif just keeps getting repeated okay so this interlude part that i'm talking about and the part where you know that intro gets repeated 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 this starts at the two minute and 50 second mark roughly okay so that's where i'm starting off this lesson now is right there and I believe it was 12 times it could be a little more it could be a little less but I'm pretty I'm 78% sure it was 12 times okay but again it repeats a lot so we have that there now with this final figure right all of that 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 one section being repeated over and over again I was hearing another little extra guitar and this is something that we can now play with one so in that section, you can choose to play it this way, or if you want to play it the way we did at the intro, totally cool, okay? It's still going to sound great. Uh, but I wanted to change it up a little bit, particularly if you're playing this um, on your own. So it would go something like this. notice how we get some of that suspension right with the D sus4 such a great chord so what we would do here is we would play the intro as is like we did okay but now what we're gonna do here is okay it's adding in some of that sus4 and all we're gonna do to play a D sus4 I know it's a chord that name that may sound a little funny but it's actually quite easy to play we already have our D chord in position. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna go ahead and get this fourth finger and we're gonna place that on the third fret of the high E string. So notice how this chord sounds now. We're gonna strum from the D string. Okay, so just like that. Now, if you wanted to use all six strings, you could too, totally okay. Really beautiful chord. Leaves things very open-ended and really calling for a resolve, right? So when you're playing this chord, notice how I want you to keep your second finger, right? That's at the F sharp, second fret of that E string. I want you to keep it there because this fourth finger, we're just gonna lift up in a moment. So no need to, you know, put it back down. Keep it there. Okay, and again, just to add a little bit of color. So I'm gonna do this slowly, okay? Again, playing that intro. And all we're gonna do is include that D sus4 in there a couple times and then loop back, okay? I'm gonna play it slowly, play it along with me, okay? So here we go. Thank you. 
as your pivot. Okay, just to add a little color. You can put that in there. I think it's quite beautiful. So, with the last couple minutes that we have, and again, thank you all so much for tuning in. Uh, always such a blast. If you're enjoying these lessons, please be sure to subscribe to the channel. It helps the cause. Click that like button that's around here somewhere. And uh, yeah, it's, 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 it's good stuff indeed. I'm going to have a lot of cool content coming up in 2024. A lot of you have been asking about, you know, a guitar rig rundown. So I'll be doing some videos like that too in the upcoming year. It should be a lot of fun. But wanted to do one of those for a while. So be sure to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss a video. And again, you want to find out more about all the cool fisherman gear. Link is in the video description. All right, so let's go ahead and look at this outro. So when we are leading up to that sliding part of the outro, which is so beautiful too, okay? And again, lucky for us, it's one shape and we're just moving that shape down, nothing crazy, okay? Um, and it's a, it's, it's a D chord shape, which is even better, okay? We're just moving that, that shape up. So what we're gonna do here now is as we lead up to that point, okay? It's gonna sound like this as we lead into the, the, the chorus, so what I'm gonna, or the, the outro. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna play through it just to give you context and then we'll talk about how to do it, okay? So here we go. just like that. So notice how we elongated, right? That, that G major seven over C, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. And then again to that G major seven over B, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. Okay, so that's all we're doing there is we're elongating those chords just a little bit to gear up for that outro, okay? So let's go ahead and do that nice and slowly from the D major. That's it, okay? Now we get to do the really fun part, it's that outro. So I'll do the outro, just the sliding part by itself, so you can see it, I'll play it a little bit slower. Notice, I don't have a cutaway on this acoustic, so those of you worried like, oh my gosh, it sounds really high, can you do it? Yes, you could totally do this without a cutaway. So, what we're gonna do here is it's a regular D chord, okay? So this is the shape we're gonna use. We're not changing the shape. The only thing we're changing is where that shape goes on the fretboard, okay? So we got down, up, down, up on that D chord shape, okay? That's all we're doing. Now, we're gonna bring the shape we're gonna slide it up here, okay? Your first finger should be on the fifth fret of the G string, your second finger should be on the fifth fret of the high E, and your third finger should be on the sixth fret of the B string. Same strumming pattern. Down, up, down. So notice how that chord sounds. It's a D major, D minor seven if we're being, if we wanna know, okay? D minor seven. Now, when we're going between these two chords, it is really important that we get that slide in. See what I mean? Because you can't do this. Listen back to the song. Notice how that, that slide is very much punctuated. Okay, let me slide to the right chord. Let me do that again. Okay, and again, D string is ringing through all of these chords that we are going to do here for this outro. So let that D string ring, totally cool. Just like that, okay? From there, okay, we're gonna bring this up a whole step. This is now a G over D, why? Because we have that D string ringing through. So bring that shape up a whole step, First finger and second finger should be on the seventh frets 
of the G string and high E string respectively, third finger on the eighth fret of the B string, okay? And let that D string ring. And we're gonna let this up, down, up, down, up, down, up. We're gonna play this one twice as long, the G over D. So in context, that sounds like this. Really punctuate those slides. Let's go ahead and do that again. Okay, we're gonna keep moving the shape up. Okay, from here, I want you to place your first finger. Okay, so now this is like a D minor sharp five. Okay, first two fingers here. Okay, 10th fret of the G string second finger 10th fret of the high E, okay? And then third finger 11th fret of the B string, okay? Cool chord in it. So we're gonna go down, up, down, up on that one too. And from there, we're gonna slide that up a whole step. This is now a C over D chord, okay? So your first finger should be on the, third, uh, the 12th fret of the G string, second finger 12th fret of the high E, and then third finger 13th fret of that B string, which is our C, so that's our root. Okay, and same strumming pattern, down, up, down, up. And then we're gonna go all the way up to the 14th and 15th fret. This is now our, our D major. We've gone all the way up from here to here, okay? So first finger, 14th fret of the G string, second finger, 14th fret of the high E, and then your third finger, 15th fret of the B string. And let that ring too. So we're gonna strum this one, two, three, and then whole note, let that ring through, okay? I'm gonna play this nice and slowly, the whole thing, okay? So follow along. We're going slow here again. Remember to punctuate those slides, here we go. It's just like that, see how that D string is ringing? Let's go ahead and do that again. faster. Here we go. And one more time. Here we go, guys. Have it. There is Seagull by Bad Company. Such a fun song to learn. Again, good for beginners through advanced. Lots of great stuff for everybody here today. Let's give those fingers a rest. I know we're really utilizing a lot of the fretboard in this song today, which is great. Again, I want to thank my friends at Fishman for helping me do these week after week. So check out all the cool stuff that I use. Put the uh, you, can, you can check out the link in the video description below. You want to check out my new EP, The Voices go to my website, angelapatrillimusic.com. You can go and, and, and get it there. And I'll even, I'll even type it in here. Again, I'm gonna take a couple minutes, if anyone, we are done with the, uh, with the, with the tune today. But those of you, if you have questions, I'll take a minute or two, because um, again, this is a live Q&A. So if you guys have questions about what we went over, uh, any gear questions, stuff like that, put them in the comments. I know it's been a while since I've been live, so I'd love to answer some of your questions. And in the meantime, I'm gonna give you a link to my new EP, The Voices. You could do that. All right, so again, thank you all so much for being here. It's always a blast. It's good to see all the familiar 
names and and all the new names. It's really great. So um, so yeah, it's great stuff. Great stuff. Uh, Sean has asked, have you ever done any luthering? I I have not. The 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 biggest thing that I will do with my guitar, I have like I'll swap off. You know, I'll swap the pick guard. Um, as far as like amp stuff, I've I've swapped out um, speakers before. That's not a huge deal, particularly if you don't have to remove the chassis on your amp. is is, is always a uh, is always a plus. It makes it a little easier. Um, but yeah, I, uh, I, uh, I I leave it to the pros. <laughs> the big stuff I leave to the pros. But um, and I, I I have I have a lot of patience with a lot of things. But um, patience and and getting a guitar set up is not quite. Um, not quite my type of patience. <laughs> so I leave it to the pros. I leave it to the pros. And if any of you in LA are looking for um, some great luthiers, I know a bunch. So be sure to message me somehow. I'd love to give you their info. Uh, yes, Mike, you ordered a shirt. Thank you. Yes, you can also go to my website. I have an online store as well. So I got a bunch of uh, Petrilli teas and, and mugs and all that good stuff. So you, you can check those out. You can check those out on my website too. Yeah. Oh, thank you so much. A lot of people loving the EP. Thank you, thank you. Very cool. All right. Um, ha, pizza recipe. <laughs> one of these days. <laughs> Ooh, this is a good, this is a good one here. Um, what images do you use on your Fishman um, R Spectrum? So obviously, I am going. I, so this is a triple O. So I go through the orchestra. Um, I I particularly love setting um, seven on my RS Spectrum DI. It, it, it gives a really beautiful sound. Again, I can't remember the, the microphone offhand, uh, but it is a, uh, it's a great little pedal. I love it. Again, I've been using it, geez, over 10 years easily. I, I, I use that RS Spectrum DI on every single one of my acoustic gigs. It does not, I, I do not leave that one at home. <laughs> that one always comes with me. It's a great pedal. Um, and again, the link, if you, if you want to find out about it and, and then learn about it, it's, it's a great pedal and the link is in the video below. All right. So again, thanks for the great questions, everybody. Awesome stuff. Uh, hope everyone is doing well. And again, wishing you so much success in your musical journey. It is always a blast and, uh, yeah, have fun with this one. It's a great tune. Again, AngelaPetrulliMusic.com. You can check out where I'm playing. You can buy merch. You can check out my new EP, The Voices, and all that good stuff. So everybody take care. Have a wonderful, wonderful weekend. Happy learning.